So here are some 4x4 example solves. Scrambles will be on the screen and hopefully you guys get something out of this. This is a bit of a filler upload. I definitely have much more exciting and incredible tutorial videos coming out soon. So the first thing I can see from the scramble is that we have this one move bar over here. But if I do this one move, something else I can see is that these two pieces come together and these two pieces come together. So immediately I already have three bars planned out, which is very exciting. But I can actually plan out the fourth bar because I know that when I do this move, this center will move over here. And I can insert this center down into the bottom by doing something like this. So, uh, while doing this move, this center moves back here. So if I move this center over here, this center will actually be in the perfect spot that the bar will be created. And now I just have these two bars created, which I can just insert into the top like so. Now, as you can see, we have these two pieces and these two pieces. So I'll first uh, do these two pieces because they're easier. I also noticed that we have this blue and white edge over here. Now I have this uh, orange and white, orange and white thing going on. And now, as you can see, we actually have our uh, white and red edge built over here. And I would usually just create my last edge over here, but since most people don't do that, I won't be doing that in these example solves. So what I notice is that we have this bar over here and this bar over here. So I'm just gonna do this for better clarity. And I notice that we have this bar over here. So I would probably go with the blue bar because it seems a bit more efficient. So I would first align the blue bar like so. Then I would join these two blue pieces by doing a slice move like that and then by doing something like that. Now the next color on the bottom would be orange. So I see that we have this orange piece over here. So I'm going to simply do this to create that orange bar and then do this in order to create this orange bar, the second orange bar and then do slice you to slice in order to insert it at the bottom without having to switch the faces a bit. You wanna minimize these face switchings as much as possible when doing four x four solves with Yao. Then you're gonna insert this green bar finally. Our second blue white edge is over here. So I'm gonna insert this into the here by doing a UF prime, then slice and then insert like so using the R prime, U prime, R prime, U, R2 trigger and then slicing back. Now, as you can see, we have a solved edge over here. So we're gonna immediately use that as our first solved thing. Now, once we slice, we're gonna notice that our next edge is gonna be the, the blue and orange edge. And something you wanna do during 323 is minimize your rotations as much as possible. So here I noticed that we can actually insert our next blue and orange uh, edge over here, simply by not rotating at all. And then I also noticed that the edge attached to it is gonna be blue and yellow. So I'm gonna rotate over here. Notice the blue and yellow is over here. And I can also see that we have an F2L pair over here. So I'm gonna move this F2L pair over here so that it doesn't get disturbed when we do the flipping algorithm over here. Now, after doing the flipping algorithm, the this edge is in the perfect spot so that it will go back and just solve immediately. And now we have three edges solved. We can actually solve this F2L pair like so, so that we don't have to worry about preserving it during the rest of our thing and actually continue three to three like this. And this does require some lefty turning, but you should be good at lefty turning if you wanna be good at just any puzzle really. So now we're gonna put this edge into here and then slice like this. And notice that we have blue and red. We have blue and red over here. Slice and then put blue and red into here. Now we have two final pairs. We're actually gonna insert this F2L pair as well. 
And then we're going to put these two uh, edges right next to each other and then do uh, a flipping algorithm to solve that. And then we're going to just continue with F12. So we have a free pair over here and then finish F12 like so. Then we have OLO for this, uh, for this case, however, what we can do is do a U2 and then do an M and then do the OLO parity algorithm and then do an M prime. Then that gives us PLO. So that's an OLO skip case. And now here we have a W perm, which you can recognize because it looks like a H perm from this side and it kind of looks like a U perm from this side. Then how we would solve this is just by doing a U perm and then by doing parity. So this is the second scramble. As you can see, we actually have a free white edge made over here. So we want to keep that in mind. So we can actually look ahead to our entire sort of solution all the way to first edge, in fact. So here is actually the solution that I had planned out entirely during inspection. So first, what we're going to do is solve this bar like so. And then we're going to insert this edge into here. Now, we're going to solve this bar by doing this and then go up and then solve the yellow center. So that was actually a very efficient way to start off our solve. But what I noticed is that we have these two edges. So what we can do is notice that these two edges are here for look ahead purposes and then solve these two edges like so. Now, it's a good thing I noticed that these two edges were there because they can actually be a very nice next pair. I also noticed that these two blue edges are here and they're not really that much better. So I'm just gonna do this and then solve this edge pair into here. Now, I see two bars over here and I noticed that we have this orange piece over here. So I'm probably gonna go with the orange center first and I look down, we have the second orange center just one move away from there. So I can very quickly solve the orange center like that. So just now notice the green center, which is our next center. So I wanna keep that in mind. I'm gonna do that and notice our other green bar over here. So we have two green bars. First, we're gonna insert this green bar. And then second, uh, I'm gonna actually first make this bar vertical. And then second, insert this green bar. And now our next color is going to be red. So I'm just going to do a U2 so that red is on the left where it should be. And then solve this red bar. And uh, I'm just going to look ahead to the next step. And we have our two blue and white edges over here. So I'm just going to do a rotation like that, set them up and then do a rotation like that. And then slice to solve this edge. Then I can insert into the cross like so. Now I'm going to do a U2 while simultaneously looking for any good pairs. And here we have a very weird pair over here, but here we can actually see that we have these two paired pretty nicely. So the reason I wouldn't go with this is because in order to set up this uh, blue and orange edge, we'd have to do a whole flipping algorithm, which is just too many moves. It would be much more efficient to go for these two. So, First of all, this would definitely require rotation. And I would keep in mind that this is the red and blue edge. So I'd actually do a rotation like this because I already know everything that's going on in the back. So it doesn't make sense to rotate like this. It would make more sense to rotate like this. So I'd rotate into the back and then do an insert like that. Now I know that our next edge is gonna be this. So uh, if you insert it like this, then blue and red would be in the wrong spot. So instead, I would insert it with an FUF move. And then finally, as you can see, there's you can't really find a blue and yellow edge thing, except you notice that it's here. So what you can do is notice that as is, this edge is gonna be the one that moves to this spot, right? So you want to replace this edge down here with this edge's respective edge. So what you're going to do is do is notice that this is going to be a orange and yellow edge, which is over here, then slice 
insert the orange and yellow edge down here and then unslice and now you actually have the orange and yellow edge down here now we're going to do a y see that this is our edge this is our edge it's hedge slice this is our edge this is our edge and just notice this is this yellow and red edge is over here so we're going to pair it with this one slice f u f prime slice notice that we have this sort of uh edge over here uh green and yellow then we're going to insert the green and yellow edge opposite to it since we only have two more edges left and then do a flipping algorithm and then just start with f12 so for this f12 pair there's actually a very nice f12 algorithm for that then we would just continue on with normal f12 and then olo and then olo and then PLO, which is a C perm. So for this case, what you would do is do a, a parity algorithm from that angle, and then you would get R perm. Finally, let's do one last uh, example solve. So here we can actually see that we have two of these white cross edges solved. I'm actually gonna bring this down over here to preserve this one because this one is in sort of a weird spot because how we would solve the rest of the white center is by doing this because we have the white bar already, already solved over here and we want to keep every all the white stuff in the bottom because we already know what's going on with the white center there's no use in sort of just like um, knowing about it so what we can also realize is that once we're done with solving the white center these two pieces would move up by an R prime like that. So we could immediately transition into solving these two pieces because we know that they're gonna move up by an R prime and we know that in order to solve two pieces that look like this, we would do something like that. So our full solution would be this. Now this yellow centerpiece is sort of in an awkward spot compared to this edge. So what we would do is actually do a U uh, Y prime in order to get these two in a slightly better situation, then do an F in order to align these two so we can create a bar and then solve it into the top. And now while solving into the top, I keep track of these, this edge and this edge. And I notice that immediately upon rotating, we see that we have these two in a nice pair and we also see the other red edge. So we immediately know where all our four pieces are. So we can first insert this edge over here and then immediately transition into the red edge. Now we have a couple of bars here. We have green, red, and orange. And honestly, the best way to go might actually be to do half centers. So if you don't know what half centers is, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube, but I'm gonna assume that you already know what it is. So what you need to do is first move this blue, uh, red over here because it goes green and then red and then do a slice too and then solve this orange like so now while solving this orange i'm going to look at my green centers because green you would actually solve the second green bar next and our green centers are, are over here in a very nice and ergonomic position and while solving the green centers i would notice that my two orange centers would actually form a bar like so so I could then very easily insert it into the back. Then finally, I would insert the final red center. And while keeping track of this final uh, yet or white edge for my very next step. And then I would bring the second part of the white edge. And then I can actually insert it rotationless like so. Now, uh, I would start by doing three, two, three. So I'd first slice like this. Notice that we have our red over here and this red matches with this red. Then I would notice that our red is paired up with yellow orange, which is over here. So I can actually just insert this yellow orange in the back. I would notice that yellow orange is paired with uh, yellow blue, which is gonna be our next edge. Yellow blue is over here. So I can actually insert yellow blue like so immediately in order to solve our first three. Now, as you can see, pretty much all of our other edges are solved just by miracles. 
and except for these last two edges. So what I can do is bring these two together and then use this very nice algorithm to solve both of them. And now finally, we have a three by three stage, which is pretty simple. I would first solve these two. Then that would probably, that would kind of leave me with a pretty bad uh, position for these two. So I'd, I would instead solve these two and then solve these two very quickly. And then these two very quickly. Then we have OLL and there's not really good position to execute OLL from, but this case, then do all really nice. And then we just get PLO parity. Huh? Oh. Okay, pretend I didn't mess up with that one. That's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time for a really big video.